Hi, I'm Kenny Yates. Welcome to Hold the Hope. And this is our regular weekly message. And today's message is entitled, Be the Salt. Jesus instructs us with a warning to be the salt of the earth and the light of the world. Now, did you realize that we get three of our English words from the word salt? Well, I didn't, I didn't really realize that until now. The first word we get is salad. It comes from the word salt. According to ChicagoTribune.com, and I quote, the origin of the word salad is the Latin herba salata, or salted greens. Its adoption is believed to have grown out of the ancient Roman practice or habit of dipping Romaine lettuce in salt, end of quote. The next word is salary. The word, the English word salary comes from the word salt. Ever heard the idiom worth its weight in salt or worth his or her weight in salt? Well, that apparently came from the Roman practice of paying their soldiers partly in salt or a salarium from which we get the word salary. Apparently salt was so expensive to produce that it was limited to the wealthy and the prominent. Thus the expression above or below the salt, which refers to salt being reserved for the nobility at table. Then we come to our beloved word, salvation. Salvation is the English word that comes from the word salt. Some people say that salt was so important in ancient times that it actually enabled society to expand. Thus, salt came to actually represent great power and great value. And we are to be that kind of salt. We're to be influential, we're to be powerful, and, we're to, and we are valuable. We're influential because our message changes lives. It restores relationship. It gives hope to a hopeless world. We are powerful because we're connected to the ultimate power, Jesus himself. He said, all authority in heaven and on earth is given unto him. And he gives us access to that power. He gives us access to that authority. We are valuable because Jesus, God the Son himself, came and died. He paid the ultimate price for us to purchase us for himself. So yes, we are valuable, if only to God, but who else to be more valuable to than to God? So with that said, let us turn to the scripture, Matthew chapter 5, verse 13 through 16. You are the salt of the earth, but if salt has lost its taste, how shall its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled under people's feet. You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a stand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. This is a part of Jesus' famous Sermon on the Mount. He was not speaking just to his 12 apostles. He was teaching the crowd, and the scripture says that it was a great crowd. Now, he said, you are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. And if he said that to them, he's also saying that to us believers today. We are the salt of the earth. We are the light of the world. I was listening to Pastor David Parsons' message, Salt and Light, just a few weeks ago. He said that in both cases, we achieve that being salt and salt of the earth and being the light of the world, not by saying anything or doing anything, but simply just being what it says, salt and light. Then he went on to explain that two uses of salt back then was that the Dead Sea, salt was what was collected from the Dead Sea, which is made up of 
of a mixture of, of various salts. Therefore, it had two primary uses. One was for use as a fertilizer. The other was used as a disinfectant. But there are various kinds of salts and various uses for those salts. The problem with understanding what Jesus was saying is we think about salt. When we think about salt, we only think about this, this plain old table salt, salt, sodium chloride, that bleached out drain of any kind of nutrients garbage that they sell us for salt. So in order for us to truly understand what Jesus was talking about, because I don't believe that, that he was talking about that type of salt. He was talking about the real salt. And so first I got a better understanding of what Jesus was saying. Let us take a look at Luke chapter 14, verse 34 through 35. Salt is good, but if salt has lost its taste, how shall its saltiness be restored? It is of no use either for the soil or for the manure pile. It is thrown away. Who has ears to hear, let him hear. Jesus says that we are the salt of the earth. So if we are the salt of the earth, we had better know, better understand what it is or what it means to be salt. Wouldn't you agree? Because, check it out, Jesus goes on to say that if salt loses its taste, how can it, be restored again because if salt loses its taste it's no longer useful for anything it's neither useful for the soil nor for the manure pile in other words the dunghill it's not useful even for the dunghill so I want us to, 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 to start by looking at that word that word good salt is good well, that word good is not the word agathos that Jesus used to describe the land that the seeds fell on, the good land that the seeds fell on in the parable of the sower. This word is kalos. And this is the theological dictionary of the New Testament's conclusion of the Greek word kalos. They wrote, and I quote, We are thus led to the basic sense of kalos, as organically healthy, fit, useful, serviceable. So salt is good. Therefore, salt is healthy. Salt is fit. Salt is useful. Salt is serviceable. That is what Jesus wants us to be. He wants us to be healthy. He wants us to be fit. He wants us to be usable. He wants us to be serviceable. So there are many reasons, I believe, why Jesus chose the analogy for us to be the salt of the earth. And I just want to name a few here, because apparently salt is immutable, meaning it's unchanging. Therefore, we as a salt, we are not to be flip-flopping. We are not to be changing our beliefs here, our beliefs there. We are not to be flowing with society. We're not to be flowing and changing with, with, with everything that comes about by society and by, by today's generation. We are to be steadfast believers of what Jesus said, what he commanded us to do. We are also not to be just pleasant today, but tomorrow we wake up on the wrong side of the bed, so we are now unapproachable. We are all grumpy. We're all mumped up. We are unapproachable. We should not be like that. Number two, salt has a high melting point of 801 degrees Celsius and boils at 1,413 degrees Celsius. So if, if we apply that to Christians, we should not be easily angered. We should not be easily boiled up. We should not be easily annoyed. We should not blow up and blow our top at the slightest thing or get all mumped up and stiff off by ourselves. We should not go sulking. We should not be sulky. We are the salt of the earth. Number three. Salt has a low freezing point of minus 1.8 degrees Celsius. So when applied to Christians, we should not be easily discouraged. 
We should not be easily frightened. We should not be easily worried. We should not be easily influenced by the world. We are to stay faithful in all things. Number four, salt are good conductors of electricity, meaning we should be good conduits of God's love. We should be good conduits of his grace, of his forgiveness, and of his great power because we are connected to God. We are the salt of the earth. You know, I want to also share a few of the many uses for salt. Number one, salt is used in occult to neutralize negative energy. Amongst other things, a lot of other stuff that the occult used for, but I don't, I don't want to get into that. Number two, it helps with weight loss if used in a hot salt bath. Number three, salt can be used to reduce the bitter sweet of food much better than sugar can, if you can believe that. Number four, salt brings out the sweet in food. Maybe another surprise. It's a preservative. Salt is a flavor enhancer. It's a fertilizer, and it can be used as a disinfectant. The, these are all kinds of good, useful things for salt. So wouldn't you agree that it's fitting for Jesus to call us salt of the earth because we should be all of these things. Therefore, I believe that Jesus is talking more about, well, I, I believe that Jesus is not talking just about preserving or being a flavor enhancer. So I want us to look a little bit deeper at what it is that Jesus is talking about here. Let us look at Luke chapter 14, verse 34. And let us break that down. It says, salt is good, but if salt has lost its taste, how shall its saltiness be restored? Now, salt is good. But it says, if, but if salt has lost its taste. And I want to camp out here for a while. Because this is a peculiar saying. If salt loses its taste or in other words if salt becomes tasteless you know that there's all kinds of imitations today you even have imitation salt i remember a few years back i was passing through tampa florida so i stopped in to spend the weekend with my grand aunt and she she's she was actually my grandmother's twin sister but anyway she was a kind and gentle woman and she was a Seventh-day Adventist. So in the morning, she made me breakfast. And I had bacon-less bacon, coffee-less coffee, and I've forgotten what else it was. But it was kind of funny because she had all of the mean breakfast items, but she kept all that within her religious beliefs. So the NIV says that if it loses its saltiness, and I wondered... Can salt actually lose its saltiness? And so I looked it up, and most people said, yes, it can, because Jesus said it could. So, therefore, it must be able to lose its saltiness. Well, when I'm studying, I don't just take people's word for it. I act like the Bereans. I go and search the scriptures and check it out for myself. So the first thing I do is I hop on to my Logos Bible um, study software and I look up the original Greek or look up the original Hebrew and find out what that says. Then I go and I search to see the other portions that this word is used in. And this is what I found. Remember that I translated the first part of the sentence, salt is good, kalos, early on. So these words... The four words translated has lost its taste is actually translated from one word, Moriano. Moriano denotes a physical or intellectual deficiency in the conduct and actions of animals or of men, also in things. The word can refer to physical sloth or dullness, but its main reference is the intellectual life according to the theological dictionary 
of the New Testament. In other words, it is an insulting and demeaning word. It doesn't mean saltiness or, 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 or lose, lose its saltiness at all or saltlessness. It doesn't mean that. Paul actually uses the word moriano in his letter to the Romans as well. So turn with me, Romans chapter 1, verse 22. Paul said, claiming to be wise, they became moriano, fools. Claiming to be wise, they became fools. And he uses that word moriano. So here's the, the, the literal translation of Luke chapter 14, verse 34. If we literally translated it, it says, salt is organically healthy, fit, useful, serviceable. But if the salt becomes physically or intellectually deficient in its conduct and actions, with what or with who can make salty again? Jesus is saying that you are the salt of the earth and the salt of the earth is organically healthy and useful. But if it, or more precisely, if you become a fool, how can you get back your influence? Or who can make you influential again? That, my friends, are, is a really frightening thought because Jesus goes on to say in verse 35, look at Luke chapter 14, verse 35, it is neither fit for the land nor fit for the dunghill, but men cast it out. He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. In other words, it's impossible because it has now become utterly useless. You are useless to God. You're useless to the kingdom. You're just plain useless. So there's nothing left for you to do but to be thrown out and be, be trampled underfoot. Remember what God said. He said that I wish you were either hot or cold. But since you're neither one, since you're just lukewarm, I'll spew you out of my mouth. But here's a good thought. Here's a good thought. Jesus said that what might be impossible for man is possible with God. For there's nothing impossible for our God. There's nothing impossible for him who sits upon the throne of power. So I want us to think about this for just a moment. Let's think about this. Jesus is saying that if the salt loses saltiness, it is no longer useful for the land as a fertilizer, right? Remember that salt from the Dead Sea contained potash, which is needed for plants to produce and develop beautiful flowers and to develop uh, um, and produce and develop sweet, juicy fruit. So when we as salt become fooled, we no longer influence our communities. We no longer influence our workplaces. We no, lo no longer influence government to produce beautiful flowers, and to produce sweet, juicy fruit. When we, as salt, become fools, we no longer influence our communities. We no longer influence our workplaces. Now, Jesus goes on to say that the, that the saltless salt was not even useful for the dunghill anymore. So what is that? all about. According to Pastor David Pawson, in those days, the salt from, from the Dead Sea was used to spread over excrement. When you were finished relieving yourself, you dumped some salt over it. And that makes sense. You see, they didn't have the fancy indoor plumbing like we do. They didn't have the comfortable sit-down toilets and bidets like we do today. They had to go out in the yard, dig a hole, squat over that hole, and do their business. After they had finished, they took a cup full of salt, spread it over their business, and, and that, that prevented the spread of diseases and, and made the, the place more sanitary. Or sometimes what they would do, they, they would relieve themselves in a pot inside the house. They would carry the pot out, they add it to the dunghill, and then they would spread the salt over the, the, the manure and disinfect it that way. So what does all that mean to us as Christians? 
What does that mean to us as the salt of the earth? Well, like potash salt fertilizes the land and causes good things to grow, we as the salt of the earth should fertilize our small plot of the world. Like our workplaces, we should be fertilizing our communities. We should be fertilizing our neighborhoods, our governments, and cause good things to grow. But instead of disinfecting the swamp, saltless salt facilitates the swamp and causes nasty infectious filth to permeate the whole world. The whole world is being permeated by an infection. And it's not just COVID-19. Pastor David Parson said that the statistics show that any community with 5% salt, the social trends reverse for the better. It's not by anything that the 5% is saying or doing, but just by being. Now, if that is accurate, how much more influential, how much more can be achieved if the 5% um, salt influence influence their place, their, their, their being, by saying something, by doing something. Remember what Edmund Burke said. The only thing necessary for the triumph of evil is for a good man to do nothing. Therefore, it is my strong belief that salt has to be an active influence. We don't just be, we are active in our communities. We're active in our churches. We're active in our workplaces. Look, according to, to Fox's book of martyrs, Timothy, St. Paul's disciple, his protege, was so zealous for the church and for the gospel that when the pagans was about to celebrate their feast called the Catagogion, Timothy, meeting the possession, severely reproved them from, from the ridiculous idolatry, which so exasperated the people that they fell on him with their clubs and beat him so dreadful a manner that he expired of the bruises two days later. End quote. It was not that Timothy was hateful and intolerant, but rather it was out of love that Timothy did it. Because he was fearful for their souls. He was being an active salt of the earth. Nowadays, a man, a great singer, songwriter in the Christian contemporary music industry, leaves his wife and children for a man. His wife is so happy for him, she, she supports him and right there by his side. Quoting, it's her faith in Christ that give her the strength to do so. The problem just might be, and I quote her words, I loved the church. Maybe if she loved Jesus more than loving her church she grew up in, she would be the salt of the earth and be in deep prayer for her husband instead of supporting that type of lifestyle. I wonder, and I'm just wondering, if it was another woman that he had left her for, would she have a different opinion? Would she feel the same way? And I'm just wondering, all right? Uh, uh, I'm just, it's just a thought. I wonder if she would feel differently. But this is a prime example of the salt of the earth becoming Moriano. We are called to be witnesses. Witnesses for Jesus. Witnesses don't just be, they speak, they demonstrate, they explain, they recall, they pray. I want to ask you, are you the salt of the earth? If your answer is no, would you like to be the salt of the earth? Would you like to be a part of what Jesus is doing in these last days? And believe me, these are the last days. Jesus is soon coming back. The time, this time, is quickly coming to the end. Remember, Peter said that, that we're living in the last days. Well, these are the last of those last days. Just look around and see all that is happening today. And it's moving quicker and quicker and quicker. Would you like to be the salt of the earth? Do you know Jesus as Lord and Savior? Would you like to accept him as Lord and Savior? 
If you would, all you got to do is to pray this prayer. Follow me in this prayer. Pray it from your heart. Believe it. Pray with me. Heavenly Father, forgive me of my sins. Cleanse me, Lord. Wash me. Thank you that you've made salvation so easy, so accessible. I receive your forgiveness. I receive your sacrifice. I receive salvation. I ask you to help me to be the salt of the earth. Help me to be a light in my community. Help me to be faithful to you. Help me to live for you the rest of my days. And I give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. If you pray that prayer, the Lord is faithful and just to forgive you of your sins and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. What I suggest that you do is to find yourself a, a, a Bible-believing church. Join that church. Be discipled in that church. And work in that church. Then I would like for you to buy yourself a Bible. Read your Bible every single day. Get yourself a highlighter. Highlight the promises. Highlight all scriptures that, that mean something to you. Scriptures that stand out. And pray those promises. God is faithful to his promises. He will not let any of his promises fail. Because he's a good, good God. Now, here's the other thing. I want you to start praying. I want you to start being the salt. Be the salt. Don't, don't just... Be, be an active part of the salt, the salt of the earth. And the Lord will bless you, bless you richly. When he comes back to get his people, you will be a part of that. There you will be with him forever and ever. Now, I want to say thank you so much for joining us. Every week, some people just join. We, we thank you. Thank you so much. My name is Kenny Yates. This is Hold the Hope. Be blessed and stay blessed.